On Larry King now, Dame Joan Collins. Why do you keep keep on keeping on? You could retire, you could go off into the watch, watch well, the doves. Yeah, I probably could if I got residuals from Dynasty. But <laughs> since I don't, I have to keep up a certain lifestyle that I have gotten used to. Tell me about being made Dame. This was given to me by Prince Charles, our future king. And it was a huge honor. I mean, it's a huge honor. You can't go any higher than that. Do other they do than a sword the like they do with yeah. the sirs. Yeah, with the yeah they, they do. They shake hands and um, they pin on a wonderful pin. Prince Charles said, about time to. Plus. Some people said, well, why didn't you come out with this before? Why didn't you tell us before? I said, I did. I wrote it in 1978 in my first autobiography, Past Imperfect. But you didn't report to police? Nobody did, no. Why? I did report it because you t people would just have laughed at you. It's all next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now, and today's special guest is a dear friend, the actress, author, producer, entrepreneur, Dame Joan Collins. She's appeared in more than 60 films and over 100 television shows, including, of course, Dynasty, which remains one of the most highly rated television dramas in history. For her work, Joan has won two Golden Globes and a People's Choice Awards, while also receiving several Emmy nominations. On September 12th, Joan will be back on the small screen in FX's American horror story, Apocalypse. Good to see you, darling. It's good to see you too, darling. Why do you keep keep on keeping on? You could retire, you could go off into the watch, watch well, the doves. Yeah, I probably could if I got residuals from Dynasty. <laughs> but since I don't, I have to keep up a certain lifestyle that I have gotten used to. Also, I've got three children, three grandchildren, a lot of godchildren, and I like my lifestyle. So, but honestly, Larry, I really love working. I really do enjoy acting. I enjoy it. And when you enjoy what you do, you, yeah. you live longer. Uh, well, I think so. I mean, my brother told me that um, people who retire in England, like age 65 or 70, they usually don't last longer than about 18 months. If yeah, they don't I've have heard anything that. to do. So I think it's much... Anyway, the fact of the matter is I never think about how old I am. I just think, um, you know, am I going to be able to do this? Do I like it? Do I like the role? And I do. We're going to talk about Apocalypse in a little bit. Tell me about being made dame. My friend Elizabeth Taylor was dame. I know, and I worked with Elizabeth, and she insisted on everybody called her dame, which I don't do. Um, I was made, a, first of all, I was made an OBE, which is the uh, most excellent order of the British Empire for acting, which was in 98. And I was um, given that by the Queen. And that is quite a nice honor in Britain. But then when I was asked to be uh, a dame, that is like the highest honor that you can give to a... a, to a, a female sir, equivalent sir. of sir, right? Yes, which people don't understand. They understand sir. Like, I said to Michael Caine, do they call you Mr. Caine or do they call you Sir Michael? He said, well, it depends. Sometimes they call me. Normally they call me Mr. Caine. And um, this was given to me by Prince Charles, our future king. And it was a huge honor. I mean, it's a huge honor. You can't go any higher than that. Do other they do than a sword the like they do with yeah. the sirs? Yeah, with the yeah they, they do. They don't give you the sword. No. <laughs> what do they do they when they hands. dame you? They shake hands and um, they pin on a wonderful pin, which they don't pin it because it's got a special kind of uh, sticky thing that they just stick it there and it stays. And then um, they say to you, and Prince Charles said, uh, about time, too, which I thought was rather wonderful. <laughs> and we chatted. I've met him a lot of times. And Must have uh, felt terrific, though. It's your country. I know, I know. So you it get the order of the England. British Empire. And the, and the uh, Dame Commander of the British Empire. So it's the most it's wonderful um, a brooch. And then there's a huge uh, heart-shaped pin that you pin on your hip. But you can only wear them when it's sort of a grand occasion. And so there aren't that many grand occasions. Well, you're a hell of a dame. Thank you. Yeah. You recently won Best Actress at the L.A. Short Films Festival for your role in Jerry. You, what was Jerry? Well, I can't say what Jerry is. It's the name of a person. 
But it was a short film, and in it I was completely, I can only say, hideous. I had prosthetics on and lines on my face. I was made to look uh, like an elderly widow who was looking for love, who has to go through um, advertisements in newspapers that say, um, uh, man 65 looking for a woman who enjoys bicycling and going to the beach. and So she has these various dates with these different people. It was a short film. It's a short film. Why did you do it? Because it's, um, everybody always thinks that I'm glamorous mm -hmm. and everybody always thinks that I only want to do roles in which I look good. And I'm an actress. I, I will do anything that I enjoy the role, so I did it. It didn't pay very well. <laughs> uh, so if you like it, you'll do it. Yes, if I like it. And if, also if it suits where I'm going to be. I don't really think I'd want to go to Prague for three months like um, some actors and actresses that I know do. Uh, you know, it was really great to do American Horror Story because it's in L.A. where I live. I want to talk about that in the next yeah. couple of segments. What do you look for now when you get a script? I look for a character that I can inhabit and um, that I can feel an affinity to. Um, Laurence Olivier said once that he didn't know how to play Richard III because it was such a horrible character. And his director, I can't remember who it was, uh, said, you must find something in the character that you can relate to, that you really like, because you can't play a person that you don't like. Because everybody likes themselves. Well, mm -hmm. most people like themselves. So I always look for something that I can like about the person, and also that it's an interesting, in, interesting part. Yeah, nobody looks in the mirror and says, I'm bad. Of course yeah. not. No, not even serial killers. <laughs> no. That's right. Yeah. After the break, Dame Joan Collins will look back at her most memorable roles, including Alexis Carrington in Dynasty. And later she'll tell us what to expect from the new season of American Horror Story. Stay with us on this edition of Larry King Now. We're back with Dame Joan Collins. On September 12th, we'll see her in FX's American Horror Story Apocalypse. In our next segment, we'll be asking about it. When you broke in, you and your famous sister Jackie... Did she, were you a hit actress before sure she was, before she was a hit author? Uh, yeah, well, I, because I started um, at the age of 17. Actually, I started at nine. I, I made my first stage appearance at nine in a, a show called A Doll's House, which was an Ibsen play. I played a boy. Uh -huh. And then I went to stage school, and then I went to RADA, Royal Academy of Dramatic Art, and I got discovered, and I was in movies by the time I was 17. And Jackie was still, like, 14. She but she used to write all the time, Larry. She did? Oh, yeah. my God, you should see some of the things she wrote when she was 11 and 12. She had such an insight into people. I found some of her writing recently. You know, uh, she died, it'll be three years in September. And um, it was extraordinary. The understanding that she had of people that she could write about, these uh, the people of a different generation, I mean, grown-ups that she would write about when she was 11 and 12. Were you always close? Yeah, we were very close because um, at that particular time, not only did I want to be an actress, I also wanted to be a, d a dress designer. So I used to design her characters. So she would say, um, this is uh, Jason, He's a hippie, and he's um, in a green dress and a green outfit. And so I would draw them. They would be cut out and pasted in these books. And I found these books after she died. And they are extraordinary because the writing, her, first of all, her writing, her cursive writing was extraordinarily good. And my drawings just were pretty good. She never told people she was stick, right? She never told Never she... told anybody, only her children. You didn't know? No, I knew. I'll never forget when she told me I was in the south of France, and I. She said, "I've got. I've got stage four breast cancer, and um, it's you know." Yeah. I, it, it was I saw there. her two days before. I know. I saw her a week before. She came to London. She came to London for my um, a big party that we had, and. Um, I don't know, it was tragic. I still, I still dream about her. Really? Mm -hmm. Did you think Dynasty would be the hit it was? 
<laughs> no, never in a million years. When my agent, Tom Corman, called me, um, I was in on holiday with my daughter, who was recovering from a head injury. And uh, he said, I've got this gig for you in LA. He said, it's called Dynasty. I said, what's Dynasty, a, a Chinese restaurant? He said, no, it's a show. It's been on for a season, and they need some spice. And uh, he said, it's about a six-week gig. So the six weeks turned into nine years. Why did it work? I think the characters were a great combination. I think the character of Linda was a, a wonderful um, a mirror opposite m image of me. You know, the sweet blonde as opposed to the devilish brunette and fighting over Blake that was, you know, the stalwart, rather square guy. The children were all very good looking. They, and I think the main thing is that everybody was very good looking, very well dressed, very rich and miserable. And I think <laughs> Blake related to that. You've seen so many changes. What do you think of what's going on now? The Me Too movement. Well... Well, you must have experienced uh, a lot of that. Come on. Any actress who was in movies in the 50s, 60s, 70s, yeah, of course I did. Um, in fact, I wrote about it in some of my earlier autobiographies. And in fact, I wrote about it... When I wrote about it recently and uh, mentioned it in an article, some people said, well, why didn't you come out with this before? Why didn't you tell us before? I said, I did. I wrote it in 1978 in my first autobiography, Past Imperfect. But you didn't report to police, right? You, you didn't make an issue of it. Nobody did, no. Why? But I did report it because you t people would just have laughed at you and not taken you seriously and just said, well, that's the way it is. I, I talked to an older actress, my first film, I was 17, I just turned 18, and the producer was chasing me all over the studio all the time, and all the inappropriate things that you hear about today, trying to corner me, and one night, um, I went into the wardrobe department, because they knew, and they hid me in a cupboard full of clothes mm -hmm. while he came in and said, where's Joan, I want to drop her home. Because at that time, I didn't drive, I had to take a bus and a tube and then get back home. And um, they hid me, and then one of the actors came in and said, I'll take you home. And he took me home in his car, and he made inappropriate advances, which was... It, I have to tell you, Larry, I pushed a lot of it to the back of my mind, because I really only think of good things in life. I try to. But with the Me Too movement, it's all come out a lot in, in, my, uh, in my consciousness. And one day, um, maybe I'll write about it a bit more. But it was shocking. It was shocking. But you know, what you used to do, you used to, I was very good at with the, the knee in the le nether regions, you know, and that so slap you... on the face. Oh yeah, I fought back. I fought back a lot as I got older. But you know, when it's the producer of a movie who's chasing you around and you're only just turned 18. Oh, uh, yeah. And you're Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, well, I know, exactly. So that w it shouldn't have shocked you then? I don't think anything shocks me anymore. Uh, um, no, it, it, yeah. <laughs> Some of it's shocking, but I, I want to know, I, I haven't seen exactly what happened. After the break, Dame Joan Collins will talk about strangers, fan encounters, best piece of advice she ever got, her proudest accomplishment, and of course, we'll talk about her role in Apocalypse. That's all ahead on Larry King Now. Back with Dame Joan Collins, terrific lady, one of my favorite people. We both frequent a place called Craig's. If you're in Los Angeles, go to Craig's. Try and get a reservation. <laughs> <laughs> if you it's can impossible. get a reservation. Yeah. Okay, tell me about American Horror Story. This, they're all hits. This has been a hit. What was it like to work for Mr. Murphy? Well, I haven't seen Mr. Murphy on the set. Um, in fact, I met Ryan um, at the uh, Vanity Fair party in February. And he said, I really want you to be in my show. I'm going to write a great role for you. And I thought it was the usual Hollywood BS, you know. And it was all very nice, and he was charming, sweet. And I went off, and as I 
went off, I saw Angelica Houston, and she said, I saw you talking to Ryan. Um, was he talking to you about being an American horror story? And I said, yeah. And she said, yeah, he was talking to me about it, too. <laughs> Oh, is she in it too? I don't know. I wasn't so far not, no. Oh, you're still shooting it? Oh yeah, yeah, we're still shooting. We're shooting until the end of October. As Ryan hasn't directed it? Not yet, no. Yeah, he has other I, I did him with the O. J. Simpson thing. I oh that was with. Oh that's right, you were in it. You played yeah. your, you played yourself. Self. I loved that. And Sarah Paulson. Hemingway was, so fabulous was the director. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, who do you play in Apocalypse? What can you tell us about Apocalypse? Well, all I can tell you is that it's incredibly frightening. I've, I've been frightened on the set several times, and I play at least three or four different characters. So it's not just one character. What do you mean? Well, what do I mean? What do I mean? I mean, it's, uh, you know, in the first one, first uh, couple, I play a character called can't tell you the name and then in the fourth and fifth I play another character and then I play another character it's scary some some are you enjoying it yes it's it's great fun because it's unexpected and the thing is I know I said that I always want to know what I'm doing but you know Ryan Murphy well he's the air and spelling of his day really isn't he yeah isn't he? so you would say Go anywhere where you point, mister. <laughs> oh, we play a little game of If You Only Knew. Oh. I just throw some questions at you. Funniest fan encounter. Oh, yes. Um, a photograph of this guy uh, that he sent to me saying, I want to marry you. I'm in jail for a crime I did not commit. And um, here's my photo. And the picture was a guy lying naked on his bunk in jail. <laughs> totally <laughs> naked. What's the best piece of advice you ever got? Certainly the best piece of beauty advice I ever got was not to ever lie in the sun and put my face in the sun. And I, so I don't. Good tip. What's the worst piece of advice you ever got? Don't <laughs> do sons down. and lovers. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Where will we find you on a day off? Probably um, watching um, American movie classics <laughs> <laughs> uh, and eating chocolates. What was the most starstruck you've ever been? Strangely and horribly enough, it's meeting my first husband because he was a big movie star in England who I had a crush on. Meeting him, I was totally starstruck. Married him stupidly. What was his name? His name was Maxwell Reed, and he was like a big star then. Someone from yesteryear you'd like to have shared the screen with? Uh, yesteryear? Oh. No, from um, the past. Cary Grant. Thing, what are things the Brits get wrong about America? Oh, they think everybody's a Yankee. <laughs> what do Americans get wrong about Great Britain? They think we all talk like this. <laughs> <laughs> Someone from history you'd like to take to lunch? Churchill. Oh. Yeah. Personal greatest accomplishment? I think my three children and being able to have a career that's was survived over 60 years. I've been 61 years. Really? On the air, 61 years. We're the same age. Yeah. We don't tell your, you don't tell your age. No. Why? But we're the same age. No. Oscar Wilde said, any lady who would tell her age would tell you anything. And he got it right. Do you have any regrets in your career? Um, no. Ever turn anything down, you regret it? Uh, yeah, I did turn a, a movie down once. Um, I was engaged to a young actor called Warren Beatty who was just starting out. And heard of him? Yeah, you heard of him. And uh, no, we're very friendly, Warren and me. He's a nice guy. I yes, like Warren. Yes, he is a nice guy. And I got this script and the studio wanted me to do it. I was under contract to Fox and Jerry Wald was begging me to do it. And I said, I really don't want to do it. And uh, he didn't want me to do it, Warren. And I turned it down and Mary, you uh, got um, the best actress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was the movie? The Oscars. It was called Sons and Lovers. I remember that movie. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, really? You turned that down? Yes. Fool. Schmuck. Warren Beatty wouldn't let you do it? He said that it was crap. It actually wasn't. I don't know why. You know, these were the days when to go away on location, it was a big deal. You know, and it wouldn't have meant me going away, and we were together, and I didn't really want to do it, and he got... I was vacillating, you know.
When we return, Dame Joan Collins will answer your questions from social media. American Horror Story Apocalypse comes out September 12th. We'll be right back on Larry King Now. We're back with Dame Joan Collins, American Horror Story, FX's American Horror Story. The title of this one, Apocalypse, begins on September 12th. We'll have some fan questions for you. Dan Collins on Twitter. How do you feel about Nicole's, Nicola Sheridan playing Alexis in the Dynasty remake? Well, so many people have played Hamlet and King Lear. What does it matter? Do you know her? I, yeah, she was a great friend of my sister's. Yeah, yeah so Nicolette Sheridan. Yeah, we met several times at uh, Jackie's parties. What do you think of their doing Rod Dynasty again? I don't know. I haven't really, um, I don't know. What do you think? We'll see. Okay. Raul Kao, 305 on Twitter. Who's been your favorite character to play? Well, two. On stage, Amanda in Private Lives, the Noel Coward play. I love doing that. I did it on tour. I did it in the West End. I did it on Broadway. And, of course, Alexis. I love that. Private game. Lives is a great play. Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. Metro Punk JRT on Twitter. Do you prefer acting in television or movies? Well, there's hardly any difference, you know, anymore. Not now, yeah. No, there's no difference. At the AZF on Twitter. What was it like working on Star Trek with William Shatner? Oh, my goodness. I never realized that that was going to be one of the most iconic episodes of Star Trek ever. He was very charming to me. He and Leonard uh, Nimoy, they were very nice. And um, I really did it because my daughter, who was then like four, said uh, when I was talking to my agent, and I said, Star Trek, what's that? And she said, Mommy, you must do it. You must do it. It's a fabulous show. So. It was fun. And that was one of the best steps of one of... The City on the Edge of Forever, it was called. And I played a missionary worker. I was so good, I should have had a halo. <laughs> David Mayer on Twitter. I asked Bill Shatner if he'd like to do some Shakespeare, and I was wondering, do you think you'd like to do Shakespeare? Do you know something? No. It's too difficult to learn. I did do it for my entrance examination to RADA. I did... Uh, Shaw's Cleopatra. No, Shakespeare's Cleopatra. Yeah. Alex Townsend on Facebook. Who is your favorite co-star of all time? Paul Newman. I loved him. First of all, I loved him as a friend. He was a really, he and Joanna were really good friends. And second of all, he was just so much fun to work with. Really? I mean, yeah. yeah. He's a good, I've interviewed He's him a few times. a great time. actor, and I really resent it when people say that he wasn't. But it's one of those things, because he was so good looking, people could never see that he was a really good actor. He really was. Yeah. Nancy Sands on the Larry King Now blog. What's the key to longevity? Luck. Uh, yeah, luck, taking luck care, yeah, luck, but also taking care of yourself. You have to take care of yourself. You have to eat right. You have to exercise. You have to have a very positive uh, thought process. I wake up every morning and I think, I'm so lucky. Life is so good. I'm so happy. I know that sounds banal. But... You beat the game. Yeah. <laughs> I know your arms hurting. So yeah. Your left hand. <laughs> Big thanks to my guest, Dame Joan Collins. Be sure to see Joan in American Horror Story Apocalypse, September 12th on FX. As always, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things, and I'll see you next time.